Hey, welcome back. Today, I'll be using Inkscape to make a custom decal, like these that I used on my recent security keypad model in Blender. These were really simple decals, though, that I made in Photoshop with text and lines. But I wanted to make more complex vector graphic decals, so this video will show you how to do that. Now, if you don't know what Inkscape is, it's a vector graphics program like Adobe Illustrator but it's free to download and use, and I'll leave a link in the description if you want to check it out. So here I am in Inkscape, and I'm going to make this electric shock decal. So the first thing I need to do is create a triangle. And to do that, I'll be using this star polygon tool. And up here, I want to set the corners to three, and I'll leave these other settings at their default. And now I'll just click and drag on the canvas to drag out a triangle. And you can see that as I move my mouse, I can scale and rotate the triangle freely. But if I hold down the control key, I can snap it to the angle I want. So once I get it to the size I want, I'll let go of my mouse button to accept it. So now I have a triangle, but I don't want these sharp corners. I want them rounded. So to do that, I'll switch to the selector tool. And with the triangle selected, I'll come down here, hold down the Shift key, and then click on one of these colors to change the stroke color around the triangle. I'll pick red for now because it's easy to see. So I'll Shift click on this red one, and now the triangle has a red stroke around it. But the corners are still not round, so I'll come over here to the side panel and go to the Fill and Stroke tab. If you don't see this tab, just click on this down arrow and you can find Fill and Stroke here. And if you click on it, the tab will open here in the panel. So now I'll switch to the Stroke Style tab, and in here you can change the width of the stroke, and where it says Join, I'll click the Round Join, and that will round off the corners. But the radius is too small, so I'll change the width to 40, but Maybe that's a little too big, so let me try 30. And I think that looks good. So now I'll shift click on this yellow color, since my symbol is going to be yellow. And then I'll switch to the node tool and click this stroke to path button up here. And then click on the stroke. And now you can see all the nodes. So what I want to do is remove the center black area. So I'll click on this node at the top to select it. Then I'll shift click on all the other nodes so they're all selected. Then I'll hit delete. And this will remove the stroke and just leave me with the solid fill. And now I want to create a black border around the edge. So I'll switch back to the selector tool, right click, and choose duplicate. And then I'll shift click on the black color here to create a stroke. And I'll go back to the stroke style tab and change the width to 6. And now I need to scale it down, but if I grab this corner arrow, hold down the control key and drag, you see it's not really scaling correctly. It's scaling too much at the top and bottom and not enough on the sides. I want it to basically offset inwards equally on all sides. So to do that, I'll hit control Z to undo. And I'm going to come up here to the path menu and choose path effects. Then I'll come over here to the Path Effects tab, click the down arrow, and choose Offset. Then come back over here and select the Node tool, and you'll see this little red dot appear. So I'll click on that dot and drag towards the center of the triangle, and that will scale the border down evenly from all sides. And the last thing I need to do is create the electric shock symbol. And I could just draw it freehand, but to make it easier, I'm going to drag and drop this image onto the canvas. And then I'll scale it down a little. And now I'll switch to the pen tool and just trace around the symbol. And when I get to the end, I'll just click on this first node to close the path. But you see now I have these rounded corners. And if I go back to the Fill and Stroke tab, you see I still have the width set to 6. So I'll change that to 1, 
and I'll set the join option to miter join. And now that I'm done with the image, I'll select it and delete it. And now I can select the symbol and reposition it and scale it up a little. Maybe something like that. So now that I have my design created, I want to group everything together as one object. So I'll click and drag to window select everything, then right click and choose group. And now I need to name this symbol, so I'll select it, then right click and choose object properties. And in here I can set the title for the symbol, and I'm just going to call it shock, and then I'll hit enter. Next I want to add this as a symbol to my library, so I won't have to create it again if I want to reuse it for something else. So I'll come over here to my symbols tab, and again if you don't see this tab, click the down arrow and choose symbols. And in here you have a whole bunch of pre-made symbols that you can use by simply dragging and dropping them onto your canvas. And you can scale them up, and you can change their color, or whatever you want to do. And there are a lot of different symbols to choose from, but I want to save this one to my own symbol library. So I'll undo all of this and switch to current document. And then I'll select my symbol and then click the plus button down here to convert the selected object to a symbol. And that will add it to the panel up here and I can drag and drop it onto the document just like the other symbols. But this is only going to be available in this file. If I open up a new file, the symbol will not be available. So I need to save this to the Inkscape symbol directory. And I'm going to delete this group because all I want in this file is my symbol. Next I'll go to File, Save As, and then for the file name I'll just use My Symbols and I'll save to my desktop. Now I need to find the correct location to save my file, so I'll go to the Edit menu and open Preferences. Then I'll go to the System section, and right here we have the folder location for symbols. So I'll click the Open button, and now I can drag and drop my file into the folder. And now if I close this file, and open Inkscape back up, and go to Symbols, and scroll down to the bottom of the list, there's my symbols. So I'll click on that, and there's my shock symbol, and I can drag it out onto the canvas. Now the last thing I'm going to do is export this symbol as a PNG file to use in Blender. So with the symbol selected, open up the Export menu. If you don't see it, click the down arrow and choose Export. Then go to the Selection tab and enable Export Selected Only. To make sure you have PNG format selected, and then click here to set your destination location. And just give it a name, and again, make sure you're set to PNG format, and hit save, and then click export. And now you have a PNG file with a transparent background that you can apply to your Blender models as a decal. And in my next video, I'll be showing a few different ways to do that. But depending on when you're watching this, the other video may or may not be up yet. So if you don't see it, check back in a few days and it should be up. I will also put a link in the description once the new video is posted. So that's going to do it for this one. If you have any questions or comments, go ahead and post them below. And as always, if you found this video helpful, Give it a thumbs up and consider subscribing. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you on the next one.